Hey everyone, welcome back. In this session, I'm going to show you how to animate absolutely anything in action. Meaning I'm going to cover some of the key principles of how to take an object from one state to the other, the fancy animations, fancy transitions and all that. And I'm going to give you specific examples of how to do so. Probably it's going to be a bit longer session. Maybe I'm going to split it in two. Let's see how it goes. But for now, if you remember, we had this prototype for the learning base for green drop a fictitious brand now we have some animations already in it so for example if you scroll down uh, this type of sticky header animates in if i let's say click on this arrow down it takes us down below if i click on the back button you know it animates as backup so you have already some sort of fundamental knowledge of how to do so but now I'm gonna show you ex as well how to do a bit more to this. So some of the elements or, you know, from top of my head, what we can animate is let's say, um, animating headlines and text when let's say page loads, uh, animating the banner image. So maybe it goes in a loop of different imagery. Um, you know, you can also make it a slideshow with some controls if you want to, if you refer back to other sessions we went through together. Also, what I would want to do is animating these cards, so maybe showing more information or maybe having some sort of effect where the image is taken you know, from one corner to the other, so all of them are moving when you mouse over. Another use case is animating these blocks one by one when the page loads or when we scroll down, meaning it's not you know shown until the user scrolls down to this section. That would be pretty awesome. Another bit is these bars. So once let's say user scrolls down, we're gonna animate the headline, uh, the subheadline, uh, bit by bit, then we're gonna animate the bars. Uh, to fill in and you know maybe even increase from 0 to 53 the digit of how many accidents happened in this specific case and, and do so for both cases. So these are the use cases I'm gonna cover next to show you how to animate these and you know with these principles then you can do whatever you want you can adapt to any app or any scenario you know uh, to make the experience much better and then in the end we're gonna have a rich website and I'm gonna begin with loading the page in and animating this security at work as well as Rolorem Ipsum text and maybe switching the image you know to flip and loop so diving right into it as you can see what i would want to do first and foremost is to convert these two objects the security at work as well as the text into dynamic panels i could do it in one block or i can do it individually for this specific case i'm going to do it individually so I'm gonna just right click on security at work and convert into a dynamic panel. And I'm gonna get, give it a name as let's say headline one and the text let's convert to dynamic panel and give it a name, let's say sub headline one. For the image, as you can see, I have just, just an image. I can right click on it and I can convert it into the dynamic panel and name it header banner to loop. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hide them, meaning I'm gonna animate them from nothing to visible. And as you can see, security at work is there, this is there, and both of them I want to make it invisible with this icon uh, under the style tab. And I'm just gonna select both and say these are invisible. As you can see, the reference is still left in yellow. What I can do is just to assign to our, you know, our canvas, as you can see, we already have a few, but let's say a new interaction on page load. And that means when the page is loading, trigger something. I'm gonna say show height, let's say those two different bits. And let me just look for plus plus headline one, let's say show animate in slide right let's say if we can find that um, and let's say easing in the 500 milliseconds that's pretty good and the next target we want to add again plus plus is good to filter out out of if you have complex prototype you kind of need to add identifiers like say sub headline and in the same way slide right 
with the same kind of existing but I'm gonna add a few more milliseconds so it's gonna appear a bit later and as you can see on page load it's just gonna show those two bits let's test it out it was a bit too quick wasn't it but what we can do then is to add a waiting time now if you remember from previous video uh, an action wait is exactly what we need so we can add let's say a second and a half before that and just drag it in front of it and let's do that let's test it out now it's gonna take a second and a half and boom you see it animated text in one by one now it wasn't ideal of course because we could also move the text if we want to but what I, I like to do is to kind of instead of having a generic slide in I would just delete those two effects show height let's delete it the waiting can stay uh, because just in case but what I would do I would capture the dimensions and where they're sitting with this so I'm gonna grab really quickly notepad and I'm just gonna note it down the ending state which is you know where the text is right now which is let's say 54 by 196 as you can see here X and Y coordinates and as well as for sub headline so it's 54 because they align with headline pretty well and 2889 as you can see in these coordinates and what they want to do next is I can just literally misplace them let's say out of a canvas like this and once the page is loaded I, I'm just gonna tell it to slide right and animate it in so let's do that let's say on page load after one and a half seconds or let's say maybe after one second because it could be a bit too excessive uh, let's add another action to it and we're gonna say move like so again plus plus headline move to because we have specific coordinates and it was 54 and 196 96 I don't know if I know it down right um, might not be that right because I wrote it down really quick and then easing in let's say 500 milliseconds straight we can add the boundary if we want to and so so and we also can and we probably must is actually show that because let's say if it's invisible, which we have right now, it's not gonna be present. So we would want to animate, show it, maybe fade it in, in 500 seconds. So first of all, we're gonna show it and then we're gonna move it, but we can also make it, make it to show a bit slower. So while it's moving, it's also gonna be shown. And let's test it out. As you can see, it animated in, but it was really quick. Now, what I would want to do is just to play with the times. So let's say this, maybe it's, I don't know, one second. The other one is one second, 200 milliseconds, like that. Something like that, maybe. You see, it's a, a, li a, a lot more smoother. Um, waiting time is maybe a bit too excessive, so maybe a half a second or so and then we can also copy the same behavior like so show hide but with a waiting time in between we also you see I aligned I I'm gonna wait first for to show hide the headline and then I'm gonna wait another 400 milliseconds and then show the sub headline so I just need to reselect it again plus plus Sub headline and do exactly the same as you can see the fading stayed the same and instead of headline here I also want to select sub headline sub headline and boom as you can see I'm on page load show headline wait a little bit show sub headline let's do it boom boom as you can see um, I screwed up a little bit with the Y coordinates um, oh, it's because I didn't select it for the sub headline. I left it by default the same as, as the other one. So all you need to do is just go to that last move and edit this, the Y coordinates, which was 289. 
And now if I test it again, boom. It's not perfect, but if you play around, if you experiment yourselves, um, then you can do more with that. And next in this session, I wanna show you how to animate the banner inside. We already created a dynamic panel for this, as you can see, header banner to loop. Now what we want to do is just add different states to it. As you can see, state one is pick number one, let's say, and then we're gonna add another state by duplicating it and saying pick two, and maybe then pick three. And as you can see, we can go from state to state and just replace this image with something else. And I'm just gonna drag a few images I have downloaded from Unsplash. As you can see, Axure always asks if you want to optimize your images. A good idea is to do so, because then your prototypes are gonna run much smoother and you know, you're not gonna wait, let's say, I don't know, 200 megabytes when they can weigh just two megabytes so you can share it easily. Let me just delete the previous one and match the corners. And then the pick three, let's say it's gonna be something else. Again, let's optimize it. These images are a little bit too light for our needs. We might want to, let's say, maybe add some sort of, I don't know, like an overlay in black. So let's see if that, a little bit of black, maybe reducing opacity, and then adding the same to pick two as well, which is even lighter, like so. And now we have those images done. How I would animate, let's say, in this case, because I just want the images to automatically flip once in a while, let's say every five seconds, just fade in, fade out. I would say, on page load and the interactions. As you can see, we have already quite a few things. I would add another action. And I would say, set panel state off and find in header banner to loop. Again, as you can see, we're now piling up more and more dynamic panels. So naming it is really crucial and naming it right. I would select state next and wrap from last to first, if you remember then it's gonna loop it. Animate in, I would probably fade it so it's not too crazy and do so in let's say 400 milliseconds. Let's see, we can then also repeat it. As you can see, this is the looping option and it's really important because once it gets triggered once, it's gonna come back to this function and then animate it again and again. So we're gonna delay it by let's say four seconds or so and we're gonna unselect that so it doesn't delay the first state to change. It, it can just change right away. And that's it. Now if we preview, we're gonna have a first animation of a text as, as seen before. And as you can see, it automatically switched into the different photos. Now, what happened there, I, I thought it would be a good idea to unselect that delay, but I think it was way too sudden. So let's select the delay first state change by four seconds, meaning the first time it's gonna change just after that and settle automatically once we load. And then the fading, maybe it would be a good idea to just add, I don't know, maybe double the time or so. So there's a crossfade and it's a bit more smoother. Again, it's a good idea to play with it with these animations, but as you can see, we have a text animating in, and then slowly, bit by bit, we're animating different um, different images. So it is pretty cool, and as you can see, it is pretty smooth, and we have all the other bits to work with. And now in next session, um, in part two, I'm gonna show you how to enrich these, and how to animate those bits bit by bit, as well as maybe make them flip and show more information or animate somehow else, maybe parallax is affected side. So let's see about that. I hope this session was useful. Uh, please stay tuned for more parts of how to animate other bits in action and how to animate anything, because once you learn how to animate one object, it's so much easier to animate everything else. So stay tuned for that. And as always, leave a like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, share with your friends and see you next time.